Hi everyone, this is Muhammad Kubaib. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about how to configure FSLogix profile for Azure AD joint VMs in Azure Virtual Desktop. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit the bell icon for the future updates. And if you wanted to learn more about Azure, Azure Virtual Desktop or Citrix VDI or FSLogix technologies, you can check out my bestseller Udemy course. The link has been given in the description of this video. Before we explore this, let's see what are the challenges we had when Microsoft introduced Azure Virtual Desktop with Azure AD Joint VMs. So when I say Azure AD Joint VMs, it means the session host is completely joined to Azure AD. It does not have any footprint on the Active Directory. So when we do not have any footprint on the Active Directory, so it is not possible to authenticate the file share over the SMB protocol. So this was the challenge with Azure AD joint VMs in Azure Virtual Desktop. So earlier we have to use the Azure AD joint VMs only for the personal host pools or any workloads which doesn't require any profile solution such as call center or any task based users those who only work on the applications and they don't want any requirement to save the data on the VDA. So with the introduction of Azure AD Kerberos functionality on the Azure files, so now we can configure FSLogix profile and we can use it with Azure AD joint VMs to store any data on the FSLogix profile. So let's see the high level points with respect to this new feature. So in this video, we will see how to create a Azure file share to store FSLogix profile that can be accessed by hybrid user identities authenticated with Azure Active Directory. So here one important note we need to keep it in mind is hybrid users. So this feature supports only hybrid users. So when I say hybrid users, these are the users which is synced from the Active Directory. So we cannot use this feature with the cloud only users. So in typically in Azure Active Directory world, we will have a two type of user. One is cloud user and another one is hybrid user. So cloud user, which is nothing but we are purely creating in the Azure Active Directory. It does not have any footprint on the Active Directory. The second one is hybrid users. So hybrid users are basically are the users which is created in the Active Directory, which is got synced through Azure AD Connect to Azure Active Directory. So basically hybrid users will have a footprint on both Active Directory as well as Azure Active Directory. So as of today, if you wanted to use FSLogix profiles in Azure AD joined VMs, the user should be hybrid user. So you cannot use this feature with the cloud only user. So this is one limitation. However, the Microsoft product group is working on this feature to support cloud user as well. However, as of today, the only support is with the hybrid user. So basically Azure AD joined session host will use the Kerberos ticket which got generated from the Azure AD to access the file share. And one more important point is, so you no need to have any line of sight connectivity with your Active Directory. This is no more required. So without your Active Directory, you can authenticate and you can access your FSLogix profile share, which is in the Azure files. So this is done with the help of Azure AD Kerberos ticket. So basically when the user is logging into the Azure AD joint session host, so Azure Active Directory, it will give the user with Azure AD Kerberos ticket. So the session host that will use the Kerberos ticket and it will present that Kerberos ticket to the storage account. So storage account will verify the Kerberos ticket with Azure AD. If the user is a valid and authorized user, then it will provide you the file share access to create the FSLogix profiles. So this is how the architecture works. Let's create a storage account for our Azure Premium file and we will create a share and then we will configure Azure AD Kerberos in the share. Let's go to the storage account blade and we will create the storage account for our FSLogix profile share through Azure Premium file. I am clicking on create. So here you need to select your subscription and then we need to select our resource group. Here we need to give the name. So I have given the name AZWVD VDA bus 001. 
this name should be unique because if someone is using a similar type of name then it won't allow you to create so it has to be unique and then we need to select the region so in this example i am going to choose central us because all my workload will be in central us so here we need to select the performance tier either we need standard or premium so always for production workload we need to select premium and here under premium account type we need to select file share because we are going to create a share for our fs logics so under redundancy we can select a locally redundant storage so if you have a zone redundant storage in your region then you can select that also for the higher availability since in this region only local redundant storage is available so i am selecting lrs then i will click advanced here i am going to keep all the options as it is and then i will click on networking so under network access i will keep the option enable public access from all network but in a production environment you have to disable this and you have to allow only through service endpoint or private endpoints if you wanted to check how to configure you can check out my blog which is a video buzz where i have mentioned how to configure service or private endpoints for our azure storage account then click on data protection i am not going to change any option here i will keep as it is and then i will click next for the encryption so here by default the storage account is encrypted with the microsoft managed key if you wanted to use your own key then you have to create a key vault under that you need to create your own key and then you can select customer managed key so this option also i have documented in my blog as well as in my udemy course you can check out and then i will click on review so the validation has been completed now i will click on create so this will take another 5 to 10 minutes to create the storage account once it is created then we will do the remaining configuration the storage account has been created so let's go to the resources so let's go to file shares and then we need to click on file share so here we need to give a name to our file share so once you define the name for your share and then we need to set the size so by default it will set it to 1 tb so i am going to change it to 100 gb this is the minimum size you can define and hit on create so the file share has been created if you go inside this file share currently it does not have any data so let's try to upload some text files for our reference so i'm going to select this excel file and i'm going to upload it the file has been uploaded to our storage account so we can see the files over here so now our file share as well as storage account is ready now let's configure azure ad kerberos on this file share so to do that we need to click on active directory not configured so here we will get three options one is active directory this is the normal way of configuring our file share with active directory and the second one is azure adds so we can use azure adds as well and the third one is azure ad kerberos so in this lab we are going to configure azure ad kerberos so we need to click on setup here we need to select this check mark and here under domain name we need to enter our domain name that is vdibus.site and we need to enter the domain guid so we have a command that command we need to run on our domain controller or any other domain joint computer so that will provide us the domain guid so this option is required to configure the ntfs or share level permissions so let's go to our domain controller or any windows virtual machines to run the command and to get the guid so i am here at the domain controller so i am going to launch the powershell so after running this command just copy this domain guid and enter so you will get the guid over here so let's copy this value we'll go back to the portal and we need to enter it over here and then click on save 
so this particular step it will create an application in our azure active directory so now we need to go to the azure active directory and we need to select that application and we need to define some permission for the api so let's go to our azure active directory so under azure active directory we need to select app registration here we need to select all applications and here we need to select our storage account which we created so this is our storage account so let's click on this and we need to select api permissions so here we need to click on grant admin consent for default directory so click yes so now this step has been completed so now let's configure the share permissions so we need to go to our storage account we'll select the storage account and we'll go to the access control so under access control we need to click on add and then add role assignments here we need to select smb and we have three roles over here so for the users we need to give the permission of storage file data smb share contributor so let's select this role and let's add the members so i have a group which is vda users so for them i am going to assign this user so these are the end user who will log into the vda and for them to create fs logics profile we need this role so let's select and click on review and assign and we need to define one more role for the administrator so let's repeat the same procedure and here we need to search for smb and this time we need to select storage file data smb share elevated contributor so this is the highest privilege when it comes to storage permissions so this will allow you to create an ntms permissions delete the share etc so let's click next here we need to add the member so i have a admin user the name of the admin user is fs test2 so i'm going to assign this permission to this user so i will review and i will create the role so we have completed the share level permissions so now we need to configure directory or file level permissions which is also called as ntfs permissions so to do that we need to log into the windows vm which is joined to domain and then we need to run a command to configure the permissions so to do the configuration we need some details so let's go to the file shares to fetch the details so under file share we need to select our share and then we need to go to the properties and then we will copy the url i will paste this url in the notepad and then i'll go back to my storage account once again and i need to copy the access keys so under security and networking we have a access keys so we need to copy this access key so i will click on show and then i will simply click on copy to clipboard and then again i will go to the notepad and i will copy over here to configure ntfs permission on the share we have logged into the windows computer which is joined to domain and the username is fs test2 which i used so this is my admin user to configure the ntfs permissions so you have to make sure that this particular user should not have mfa configured in the azure active directory so if it is configured with mfa then this particular procedure will fail so now we have the command so we need to replace the value with our own value so let's copy this command and we will open a command prompt to execute this command so basically it will mount our file share to the local computer so the command has been successfully completed so let's go back to our file explorer and we will see the file share which is mounted to our local computer so as you can see the share has got attached to our local machine so let's open this share and we can see the file also which we uploaded earlier and i will select properties and we will define the ntfs permissions so here under security we need to select edit and then we need to click on add so here we need to define our users so we have created a group which is vdi users click on check names so and then click ok and apply and ok 
so then we need to go to the advanced here the user group which we added we need to edit the permission and we need to select applies to this folder only and then we can give a full control parallelly we can cross check the creator owner permissions so it has to be subfolder and files and then we can give full control permission to this particular creator owner so this is the ntfs permission required for the end users so let's add our administrator as a full control to this particular share so let's click on add so here we need to select our admin user which is fs test2 select check name and click ok and under permissions we need to select full control and then apply and click ok so now we have defined the ntfs permission for our end user as well as for the admin user so now we have completed all the procedure related to the file share so now we need to enable the azure ad kerberos functionality on the session host so i have a session host which is joined to azure active directory so if you wanted to know how to create azure virtual desktop with azure ad join so you can check out my blog so in this blog i have documented end to end procedure to create avd session host with azure active directory only so now i am going to take a remote of this virtual machine and i will configure the azure ad kerberos functionality on this particular session host so now let's configure azure ad kerberos functionality on this particular azure ad joint session host this you can do either through intune or local group policy or through registry so in this demo i am going to use registry to do the changes i am going to take a remote of this particular virtual machine so i have logged into the azure ad joint session host the name of the session host is azavd-0 so let's run a command which is ds rec cmd slash status so this will provide the details related to the azure ad join as you can see here it is mentioned as azure ad join s and domain join to no so it means this is purely joined to azure ad active directory and it is not joined to the domain so here is the command to create the registry entries so we need to create two d words so let's execute the first one so the command has been successfully completed and let's execute the second command to create the registry d word so both commands are executed successfully so let's verify the registry entries as you can see we have the registry entry over here which is load create copy from profile so another one is we need to go to the hklm and then we need to go to system and then we need to go to current control set control lsa and kerberos parameter so here we can see cloud kerberos ticket retrieval enabled for the fs logics configuration also we need to create a registry entry here in the base image or on the session host so let's open the registry and we need to go to hklm software fs logics and profile so here we need to right click and click new and select string value so here we need to keep the value as vhd locations so let's copy this value and enter it over here under the value we need to copy our file share location so which is this one so let's click ok and we need to create one more d word so let's click new and select d word here we need to enter the name as enabled click copy and enter it over here and the value must be one so click decimal and here select one so this is the minimum setting required to enable the fs logics so if you wanted to apply more settings related to fs logics you can refer to the microsoft documentation and accordingly you can create more registry values for the advanced settings so once we configure all this registry then we need to reboot our session host so let's do the reboot so now let's test the functionality of fs logics uh, with azure ad joint file share so i have logged into the id web portal using a 
user called fs test 3 and i am going to launch the vdi now since i have configured single sign on so this will launch seamless so now i have logged into the vdi successfully so let's see the fs logic status so I have pinned this FS logic tray in public desktop so that any user who is logging into the VDA by default they will get this FS logic tray in their desktop. So this is very helpful for the troubleshooting. So when you double click it, it will shown here in the taskbar. So we need to select and then we can see the status of our FS logic profile. So currently it is showing active. So similarly, if you launch your storage account, there also you can see so let's go back to the storage account so you can see the profile under the storage account as well so similarly if you are trying to access the path which is our storage account path manually from the windows explorer so from here also we can see the profile so currently this metadata it will tell you from which avd vm it is connected so currently this is the session host which is connected to my fs logix profile so this is how we can configure our azure premium file with azure ready kerberos functionality to use fs logix profile solution in azure ad joint session host thank you and see you again